Hi, this is Franklin Yamamoto with SQL Grease. Today we will demo a common scenario. Users complained about application slowness at around 5.30 to 6 p.m., but the problem cleared prior to getting somebody involved to diagnose it. In order to do this, we'll go to the history option for the instance that we're interested in. Once we get to the history page, we need to set the time frame to that where the problem was reported. The amount of history stored depends on how much space is allowed by the monitoring plan purchased. Even the smallest plans can hold months of data. This view is showing the total elapsed time of queries in SQL. Hovering over the columns, you will see the query associated with the activity. This view helps you see what queries are contributing to the most activity in SQL. In this view, there's nothing particularly obvious that looks like it's contributing to a system slowdown. We'll switch to the wait view next. The wait view shows us total wait events in SQL Server and the queries that contributed to them. It appears there is a noticeable increase in lock wait between 5.40 and 5.44 p.m. We'll take a look at the query that contributed most to this lock wait. This chart is showing weights only for the query we selected. You can see a noticeable increase in lock weights between 5.40 and 5.44 p.m. This page shows the general execution statistics for the queries such as average run times, IOs, rows processed, and CPU time. Next we'll check for multiple execution plans. In some scenarios, a change in execution plan can lead to lock contention. Since there is only one execution plan in this time frame, it is safe to assume there was not a change in execution plan. Next, we'll check the individual requests that executed. Each of these are requests that were at least one second in duration. When I say a request, this is an individual query, batch, or store procedure execution. The duration column shows some extremely long executions occurring. For example, these queries were taking over two minutes to execute. If you are watching closely on the Query Statistics tab, this query normally executes in under a second on average. You will also notice the session was blocked. You probably need to explore these requests to find out what they were blocked on. We'll go ahead and select Session 75 since it showed the longest execution. This view is showing us a second-by-second -second sampling of what Session 75 was doing during the request. A quick glance will show us it was stuck waiting for session 70 while in lock wait. If we click on the blocking session, we will get a view of the lock tree at that point in time. In this view, we can see that session 75 is blocked by session 70. Session 70 is in turn blocked by session 92. Session 92 is the root blocker. By clicking on the root blocker, we can look at the details as to why it's blocking. We can see that the session is in a sleeping state. Also, we can see that the last query executed on the session started a transaction but never issued a commit or rollback. This appears to be the root cause of our problem. 